In today's video, we will be covering IDTR. So it is a manufacturer specific register it is called the interrupt descriptor table register. It's a six byte register. The top four bytes contain the base address of the IDT, which we'll find out what that is in a moment. And the bottom two bytes store the table limit. So the IDT, what is it? It stands for the interrupt descriptor table. Um, it is an array of 260, 256 eight byte entries. Each entry contains a pointer to an interrupt handler, a segment selector, and an offset. So SIDT is an assembly instruction. It stores the IDT to a location. So over here I have this uh, assembly code and right here I'm just saving the previous base frame pointer. I'm establishing a new stack frame. I'm adding eight bytes to the stack. I'm using the SIDT instruction and I'm storing the IDT at a location on the stack, which is uh, EBP minus eight, which is the eight we just subtracted ESP by. We're storing the bottom two bytes in EAX and this is uh, the SIDT, well the IDT. And this pretty much just prints the value and it's gonna get printed uh, in hex and in decimal format. The next print we're gonna see is um, the mid two bytes and we're storing that in EAX and we're, we're printing that value. Next, uh, we're storing the top two bytes in EAX and we're printing that value. And then my final print is the complete base address. It's being stored in EAX and it's being printed. I'm going to open up the command prompt. And we can see um, the bottom two values, the mid two, the, the mid value and the top value. And we can see the base address altogether. And if we run it again, we can see that it's changing. And the reason for that is because each processor has its own IDT, hence its own IDTR. On Windows XP Core 0, the IDT base address is this value here. And to prove that, I'm gonna go ahead and run a VirtualBox. I'm gonna run the same program. And we can see that value, run it again. And that value stays consistent. If um, it was a multiple core, if it had multiple cores, this the, the values would be changing, but this one would still show up. And then on later versions of Windows, the IDT base address changes between reboots. They should stay consistent between processors. So if I run this enough time, we're gonna see the same values popping up. So like here we can see that these two are not the same. Um, these two are not the same. And it looks like this is the same as our first run. 441F9, 441F90C0. So let's run it in a debugger to see exactly what's going on. So here we go, uh, saving the, the previous base frame pointer, establishing a new stack frame, subtracting the stack by eight bytes. And we can see the eight bytes added on the stack over here. We're gonna go ahead and add the IDT to the stack. And we can go and we can see those six bytes added here. The, the, bottom, four, the bottom two bytes are unaffected and the reason for it is to keep it aligned properly. So here we are loading um, the bottom two bytes in EAX, pushing the value, pushing the value, uh, pushing our format string, calling uh, printf, and we're clearing our variables off the stack. Uh, we're, we're loading the mid two bytes into EAX. We're pushing that value, pushing that value, uh, calling the format string, printing it. Again, clearing the stack. And we're doing the same for the top two bytes. And right here, we're loading the complete base address into EAX, pushing that value, pushing that value. 
format string printf and we can see that value right here and we're clearing our variables off the stack we're going to go ahead and return zero we're going to restore oh we're going to clear our stack which i believe it should already be cleared oh no we cleared those two values up top uh, we're storing the previous base frame pointer and we're terminating the program. That's it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Again, guidedhacking.com slash donate, patreon.com slash guidedhacking. Please support us so that we can continue to make videos and peace out.